Good afternoon. We welcome you back to Baton Rouge. And uh, first day of the regionals here in Baton Rouge. Game two of the day has ended. LSU gets the win over Rice by the score of 70-60. to 60. We are joined by head coach Kim Mulkey, also by Michaela Williams, the far one, and in the middle, last year, Poa. We will start by asking questions for the players first, please. Uh, you please address the players by name so they know who you're talking to. And if you'll introduce yourself and your affiliation, since we are streaming this, we will bring a microphone to you. And then after the players are done, we'll dismiss them, let them back uh, go back to the locker room, and we'll have questions for Coach uh, Kim Mulkey. So with that, we'll open up the floor for questions for Michaela or last year. Uh, for Poa, um, Michael Cobble, WBRZ-TV in Baton Rouge. How important was it for you to get out there and play, and how did you feel uh, with a good number of minutes today? Um, I was really nervous. I mean, obviously coming back from the injury, but I was really excited to play um, with the girls again and obviously getting the feel of the court with them again. Um, but, yeah, it was good. Um, Michaela, I guess for you it's a similar situation. You're working your way back, uh, even though you played in the SEC title game. Just what was it like, the pace, and then obviously playing in your first NCAA tournament game? Um. The pace was, it wasn't anything different. I mean, I um, came in expecting it because we've been playing like this all season. But um, I was excited. Obviously, this, well, we got a W, but it's not how we wanted to start um, March Madness off. But we can't do anything but go back to the drawing board and pick it up for the next round. In New Orleans, uh, for both the players, it kind of felt like you guys finally got into a rhythm in the third quarter, 23 points, just kind of what led to that in that frame. Um, obviously, we had to pick up the pace. Um, obviously, you know, it was kind of it was a sloppy game, and I felt like we were just out of rhythm at first. You know, missing shots, but those are the shots that we normally make, and you know, it just happened to be one of those games. But obviously, in the third quarter, we picked it up, and yeah, we continued. Um, to piggyback off of um, Poa, um, I think I w we picked it up, yeah, but I think that's just us hitting shots. We still had a lot of turnovers, and we still had a lot of sloppy possessions. We just happen to make shots at the right time. Uh, this is for last here. And uh, Michaela, uh, this is Blake Berdyer from WNBA Swish. Uh, what do y'all, y'all had 24 turnovers. What do y'all think you got to do next game to correct that problem? Take care of the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's really all it is to it. Take care of the ball and um, pay attention to the details. Take care of it. Look who you're throwing it to. Stop making careless turnovers. Yeah, I agree. Um, Take care of the ball, but I feel like I'm um, just making the right plays at the right time and obviously being more patient um, and being more of a leader. Uh, yes, for both of y'all. Just how, how good was it to be tested right out of the gate and kind of feel the intensity that is postseason play? I mean, it's always a good feeling to get your feet wet early so we don't have kind of get shook later in the tournament. But like I said, it's not kind of how we wanted to start it. We had higher expectations for ourselves. So just going back to the drawing board and picking up um, all those sloppy mistakes. Yeah, I agree. Um, obviously, we just got to focus about next game and shake it off. Any other questions for the players? the job that Anissa did. I think it was in the third quarter where she really kind of, I think she had four buckets in a row or something. Um, her physicality down low and, and kind of helping you guys get back on track. What kind of teammate and important part of this offense and defense especially is she? Um, Anissa, as soon as she came in, she was a leader, especially for me. So just her picking us up and we're, um, when she goes at a full head of steam, we're all right there back to follow her. Just like MK said, um, Anissa's just a beast, obviously, and um, once she gets her role and, you know, gets the hot hand and the feel for the basket, we, like, kind of piggyback off her, and, yeah, she's just an amazing player, so she did really good. Uh, Y'all out-rebounding them by over 15. Was that, I mean, and was that in a uh, point of emphasis to get the ball to Angel and, uh, and uh, Anisha? Anissa, was that was that the point of emphasis to get them the ball and to get the ball in the paint? Yeah, I mean the main focus because we we pretty much have the best bigs in the in the country, and I truly believe that. And I feel like you know the first thing after, while playing, it should be looking inside. Um, and obviously, once they start doubling and you know trying to piggyback off like how they're playing them, then we kind of can run different plays. Good players. 
One more in the back for the players. Chessa Boucher with NBC 33 here in Baton Rouge. For both of you, Angel struggled. She was double teamed, had a lot, but she also dominated the boards. What did you see from her knowing that, hey, maybe she's not getting the looks or the, the shots that she wanted, but making up for in the back on the other side? Um, I think Angel's just a um, good teammate. Even though like she had an off night, she was there for me every time I missed a shot encouraging. She was talking about how she was just going to rebound and do her part on the defensive end. So I appreciate her for being that leader and not um, getting down on us in the game. Um, I mean, you know, I've been playing with Angel for a while now, and I feel like um, the expectation, especially for women's basketball, she set it so high. And obviously when she does have one of these games, you know, uh, she does show the leadership, you know, on the other side. Like, it's okay, keep going. Like, And um, people don't obviously see that part, but she's a great leader. Paul Michaela, thank you all very much. Congratulations. Appreciate your time. We'll look forward to seeing you Sunday. Thank you. All right, we'll let the players get back to the locker room. We'll open up the floor for questions for Coach Mulkey. Again, please introduce yourself uh, and your affiliation. And with that, let's open up the floor for questions for the head coach. Uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge. You talked about this yesterday, you know, just the concern about the time off in between the tournament and this. What, what did you think about, you know, the team and the way they came out and eventually settled? I want to give credit to Rice. I'm just a coach that believes Rice was excited. Um, they have a new coach. Two of my former managers are their coaches. Um, proud of those guys. Um, I just thought there was a there was a feeling about us that maybe lack of urgency and thinking that you could get beat. Um, but at the end of the day, you have 24 turnovers. You're you're gonna you're gonna look bad. And 24 turnovers. Um, it, it it almost became comical because I thought, are they in a contest to see who has the most turnovers? Because that's how many each of them had. Jerry Lee Willis Jr., the College Sports Report. Coach, you mentioned you just mentioned one of the points of emphasis you carry on in practice all the time, not being not having an off day. And today it wasn't so much an off day, but it was just a just they were slow. Basketball game. It was an ugly basketball game. It's okay, you won't hurt our feelings. <laughs> okay, it happens, but you won. Keep perspective. You won. You survived and you're gonna advance. Um, if I remember last year against Miami in the Elite Eight, that was an ugly basketball game, and I told the audience I'd turn my TV off. I wouldn't watch this. It was ugly today. Uh, to emphasize the good things, uh, we did hold them to 30, below 39.9 from the field. You're going to win games when you do that. Uh, we didn't shoot it bad, with the exception of a couple of players. I thought the other players had good shooting percentages in the shots that they took. Uh, I thought we got to the foul line like we have all year. Um, we put them at the foul line, if I remember, right about the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. That's bad. That's bad defense right there. And we're not, we were not very disciplined in that fourth quarter. Uh, I thought our crowd was outstanding. Um, very, very good crowd today for a 3 o'clock game on a Friday. But we don't work in Louisiana. Fridays are our first, that's the first day we get to party. The weekend, baby. Uh, Matthew Bruni with on three. Uh, just Michaela and Flage, um, especially Michaela coming back uh, from the injury, just uh, what, how did you evaluate them off offensively and how they were able to uh, get, their, get their shots? Well, they both shot it pretty good. I think Michaela was. Five for ten. Flage was five for nine. Um, that's a freshman and a sophomore, and I thought they did just fine shooting the ball. Because um, they're just the turnovers. I mean, twenty-four turnovers. That's that's bad. And I, I'd like to give Rice some credit for their one-three-one half-court defense. May have created a maybe half of those, but a lot of those turnovers were just us. A lot of them were just unforced. Scott Rappelet with the Advocate. Kim, would you uh, talk about the, you know, playing Poa 
you know, the, the, how you've planned to play her today. Did you think you'd get that many minutes out yeah. of her? Yeah. Uh, and, and how did you think she looked? I thought she did fine. I thought she frustrated me at times, just like Haley did. Those are your two primary ball handlers. What did they frustrate me with? Turnovers. So it was flipping a coin, which one was not going to turn it over. Um, and so, but I'm, I'm grateful that Poa is healthy. I'm grateful that she's back and uh, we're a better basketball team. We have more depth with Poa and um, she's, I'm, she's not under any constraints as far as playing time or anything like that. Bryce Coon with 24-7 Sports. Coach, it was kind of mentioned earlier to the players, but just your kind of uh, kind of initial reaction to, obviously, Anissa as a tone setter. I mean, I know you've seen this all year out of her, but especially in that third quarter, felt like she could really kind of set the tone, and both players mentioned we, we follow when, when she kind of gets rolling. Anissa is, um, her motor never stops. Um, she's just, she she has the same pace the entire game and that pace is just really good and um, she's just been um, an outstanding player for us undersized post player um, probably don't use her enough on shooting the three ball because of our offense but uh, she battles in there for rebounds and um, she's she's I'm just grateful I get to coach her and she's on our team in my first question, you kind of had a, a statement that maybe they didn't feel like they could be beat. Was, did you like that this was a bit of a reality check or a test for them? I like that we won. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to sit here and critique everything we did bad. What good is that going to do? Uh, there are a lot of teams that got beat today that weren't supposed to get beat. We won. And uh, we advanced to play an outstanding Middle Tennessee uh team and program. I have much respect for Coach Insel and the job he's done and um, have a former All-American player of mine on that staff. So I'm getting old. Uh, this is Blake Spadella from WNBA Swish. Uh, how, what do you think of Angel's leadership abilities despite her having an off-shooting game? Angel got 19 rebounds. She didn't shut it down. She got seven shot attempts. So it's not the Angel Reese show with us. We got other people that can score. She brings a great deal of um, attention to us and we're so glad. She's an all American, but everybody's entitled to a bad game. She's entitled to one and her teammates picked it up for her. Freshman, you know, scored points. Poa came in from being hurt. Just, you just help a teammate. You just battle through. But the only time a coach or the only time I would get upset with somebody that has a bad um, night is if you just quit on us. You don't give us something. Well, she, I think, almost had 20 rebounds. So she was trying. One more question for Coach right back here. Coach, you mentioned earlier not wanting to really dwell on all the bad things. It doesn't do a lot of good. What do the next 24 hours look like for you all in terms of kind of moving on from this and kind of prepping for Middle Tennessee? Well, we're going to have dinner tonight. We're going to recruit tonight. Uh, we're going to watch film tonight. We're going to get in bed late tonight. We will sleep in a little tomorrow. We'll come and watch film as a group tomorrow. Um, come meet with you guys again tomorrow. I can't wait. Um, and get back on the floor, very limited minutes, because they played a hard game today. So, do we know what time we play Sunday? Anybody? Not yet. We won't know till late tonight. Won't know till late tonight. Is that before my bedtime or after my? Sounds bedtime? Sounds like you're going to be up late, so we, we might probably might before. Because <laughs> television dictates everything, right? Why are you looking right? At, why are you looking at me? Huh? <laughs> Some whiskey. You like whiskey? You knew. Where are you from? You haven't been in my press conferences, so where are you from? Mandeville, St. Tammany Parish. They got a lot of whiskey and good boiled crabs in St. Tammany. Come back. Don't make this your first and last trip here, okay? Good, good. Coach, thanks for your time. Congratulations. You bet, we baby. appreciate it. You bet.
We'll be back here in just a couple minutes. We'll hear from Rice's head coach and a couple of players. Once again, LSU gets the win 70 to 60, advances to Sunday's game against. Thank you.